And so you can kind of learn those formats of what you need to write down um, to be able to figure out EBIT or EBT or in this case we have a formula I believe for the next one. Question 9, if you look at the last sentence it says how much was its free cash flow in millions? So you have to know the free cash flow formula. Free cash flow is equal to earnings before interest and taxes times 1 minus the tax rate plus depreciation and then let me get my eraser and then minus capital expenditures which we call it capex plus the change in net operating working capital so I said delta in OWC and so surely they've given me all this information so let's see operating income that is another way to say EBIT 5.95 million so I'll write that down here and this is multiplied times 1 minus the tax rate and I see tax rate over here 40 percent and then plus depreciation gave depreciation is 1.2 million and then minus let's see expenditures on fixed assets and net operating working capital totaled 0 0.6 so I can just put that was the total minus 0.6 and so when I go through all of this I get 4 0.17 million is the free cash flow and let's go to the next one so question 10 I'm going to look at the end and see what are they asking what is the market value added so since they're saying market value added I just might as well put the formula up here it's just the market value of equity minus the book value oops <laughs> that didn't work so the minus the book value of equity and you'll get the answer and this is in dollars as you can see by all the answers over here so let's see did they give us it says over the years O'Brien's corporation stockholders have provided 20 million dollars of capital so that means that is the book value of equity so I already have that part so I'll write BV for book value and then it says the firm now has 1 million shares of common stock outstanding and it sells at a price of $46 per share. So that's the market value per share, but to get the total market value of everything outstanding, I need to multiply $46 times 1 million shares. So the market value of equity is 1 million shares times a price of $46 per share and so I'll get $46 million and so now I've got the way to get the market value added and so I've got $46 million and I subtract the book value of equity which was the $20 million and I get 26 million is the market value added so they're doing well they've added a lot of value to their company and let's look at question 11 
so I can get all the room I possibly need. So Emory Mining. Well, let me look at the last question. Um, how much was the firm's net income? So if it says that and I see they've given me a lot of numbers, then I know I need to write down this whole thing where I have sales minus operating costs minus depreciation. And that gives me EBIT and then minus the interest expense and that gives me EBT and then minus taxes and that gives me net income. So we've got a lot to write down. So sales were 167500 from right here. Operating costs were 75500 and then depreciation they said here is 10,200 and if I subtract those numbers I get 81,000 here 81,800 and then I need to figure out interest expense so I'll do this on the side it's going to equal the amount of bonds 16,500 which is from right here times the interest expense rate so 0 0.0725, so it's 7.25%. And my interest expense is $1,196.25. So I'll subtract 1196 I could go ahead and put 0 0.00 there. So now when I subtract those two, numbers to get earnings before taxes I get eighty thousand six hundred and three dollars and seventy five cents and then I have to figure out taxes so I could do that over here taxes are going to equal eighty thousand whoops So it's going to be 80,603.75 times the tax rate. And let's see, the tax rate is right here. It says 35%. So times 0.35. And so my taxes are $28,211.31. So minus 28,211.31. And I'll finally be at the net income when I subtract those, the 80,000 minus 28,000. I get 52,392.44. And so that's answer E. So if you ever see net income, you know you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines that you need to do with two extra little side calculations. Okay, so let's look at number 12. And the question says, what is the economic value added? So let's write what the formula is for economic value added. It's earnings before interest and taxes. times 1 minus the tax rate. I'm not sure why that circle is coming up. And then minus the weighted average cost of capital times the total investor supplied capital And so it says that if we look for earnings before interest and taxes, that number is right here, 4 million times 1 minus the tax rate. So the tax rate is found right here. It's 40% minus the weighted average cost of capital, which we'll learn about that later, 
it's 10 percent so 0.1 and that's multiplied times the total investor supplied capital which they just gave you that 17.5 million and so when I go through all that math I get 0 0.65 but that's in millions so that's the same thing as 650,000 which is answer C and then let's look at question 13 okay Oh, the question is how much net operating work cap working capital does the firm have and so again the net operating working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities minus at notes payable so again that's an L the current assets we can find right here it's 1300 minus and then the current liabilities and find that right here it's $900 minus notes payable which is 625 and so this one's pretty easy we get 1025 and that's answer A and then I think this is the final question so you're given an income statement how much after-tax operating income does the firm have so what this means is I want EBIT times 1 minus the tax rate that's after-tax after operating income so EBIT is right here 1058 times 1 minus the tax rate and the tax rate can be found over here times 0.35 and that gives me six hundred and eighty seven dollars and seventy cents which is answer D and so those well, that's the end for the chapter 3 practice problems